Open up your Bibles. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Beginning in verse 5. Today's Healing Sunday, so we're going to be praying for the sick. We're going to see a lot of miracles, amen, a lot of miracles, amen. Get ready, get, get ready to say goodbye to all your pain. Get ready to say goodbye to, to any sickness or disease that's been attacking your body, amen. Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 5, it says, When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed, and, is, and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need, need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, turning to those who were following him. He said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Verse 13, then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believed it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. Thank God for his word. Now, I want, to, I want you to notice that this Roman soldier, this, this leader, recognized authority. Everybody say authority. He recognized the authority of Jesus Christ to heal. And so he, he didn't say, hey, Jesus, come on home. I got a servant sick. Can you heal him? He said, you are a man of authority. All I need from you is to say a word. Your authority for healing is so powerful that if you will just say the word, my servant will be healed. He had complete confidence. He had complete assurance, not because of anything that he saw, but because he knew authority. That Jesus had the authority to heal the sick. I want to tell you, Jesus still has authority to heal the sick. And we have to recognize that authority. We have to recognize that he has authority to heal all those that are hurting, to heal the captive. He knows how to get rid of cancer. He knows how to get rid of diabetes. He knows how to bring down high blood pressure. He knows how to remove pain. He knows how to create things that seem like are not working. He knows how to get those things working together again, just as if they're a brand new, amen. Jesus knows. He has the authority to turn back the, the, the forces of sickness and disease. He has the authority to heal all, all that recognizes his authority for healing. He has that authority, amen. I want to give you two truths when it comes to healing. Two truths when it comes to healing. Because I believe that the authority of Jesus Christ to heal the sick is here today. I believe you're going to be healed in the name of Jesus, amen. I want to give you two truths. Number one, Jesus gave his authority to heal the sick to us. He has given you the authority to heal the sick. Amen. Say, I have the authority to heal the sick through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a truth. That doesn't change. Nobody can change that. That's a truth according to the word of God. I'm going to prove it to you in just a moment. Amen. I believe that you're going to have miracles like never before in your own personal life. Amen. Don't come chasing after Pastor Kevin to pray for you when you're sick. Pray for yourself. You have authority. After today, you're going to say, no, the same spirit that's in Pastor Kevin is the same spirit inside of me. I'm going to use the authority of Jesus Christ to heal the sick. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I have authority to heal the sick. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say it like you believe it. I have authority to heal the sick through Jesus Christ. Amen. And here's the second truth. The second truth is Jesus has given you his authority so that you can be healed. You have authority to heal others through Jesus Christ, but you also have authority to walk in healing. Amen. And I'm going to share, the, share that word with you. Amen. How many believe that there's authority to heal the sick? Amen. Last week, and let me just, let me tell you, this week, these are, these are just this morning, uh, there's a, a, a man named Raphael from Harlingen, 
and just looking for a job. And, and when they prayed, the presence of God came in, into the, his home, and he feels, he feels at peace. Another man named Javier from Mercedes praying for, for his finances and his marriage. And the, he said that when they prayed this morning, as they were praying right now, that the Holy Spirit came into the room, was strong, and he received a touch from heaven. Another man, Jose, from San Diego, needed prayer for the same issues for his finance, and, and the Spirit of God came in. But there's another man from Mexico. I'm telling you, we're getting phone calls from Mexico. This man named Javier, he needed prayer for his, for his back. He had pain in his back. And as the prayer partner was praying for him, uh, he said that one of his legs was longer than the other. As they began to pray, the leg grew out. His legs are now completely even, and all the pain has left his back. Amen? Over the phone. Amen? How many believe that Jesus does that? Amen? Okay. Do you believe that really? Okay. Look, look in front of you. You got enough space right in front of you. I dare you just to stretch out your legs right there. If you could even put your, your heel on the ground, but stretch them out as far as you can. And see if you have one leg longer than the other. Put them close together. Put them close together. Just stretch them out. And you at home, do that too. Just stretch out your legs. Measure your legs. Put your heels together. Put them on the ground if you can. Kind of scoot up on the chair if you need to. So you can use the ground as a, as a, a base to see if one leg is, is longer than the other. Put your, the reason why is sometimes it's our posture and sometimes it's just the way we, we grew. One leg grew longer than the other. Amen. How many of you have? a leg longer than the other let me see your hands wow wow keep your hand up if you have a leg longer than the other praise god okay okay so most of you uh, if you have any pain in your back or if you have one leg longer than the other okay i believe that we have authority in the name of jesus that we could pray right now from this pulpit and that those legs will grow out how many of y'all believe that god can do that amen okay so i want you to keep your eyes open and watch the miracle this is your miracle amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So put your feet together and begin to look at your feet. And as we pray, I'm going to pray. And as we pray, that leg is going to, those legs are going to come out. Amen. And as I lead you, you say the leg to grow out. If the right one is shorter, tell the right one to come out. If the left one is shorter, tell the left one to come out in Jesus' name. Are y'all ready? Y'all understand? I need you guys to come in agreement. All right. Keep your eyes open. Watch your legs. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. For the authority to heal the sick through Jesus' name. Right now, I command the right or the left leg to come out to the same size as the other in Jesus' name. Now just watch. Just watch. Let God move. Amen. Just stay in, just stay in atmosphere of prayer. Just keep your eyes open. Just thank God. Amen. Watch how God is just stretching those things out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the hand of the Holy Ghost, just moving them out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. All right. How many of you felt the presence of the Lord come upon you? How many of you saw a leg come out? If you saw a leg come out, I want you to go like that. You, you, your leg come out? Your leg came out? Holly, honey, your leg came out? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your leg come out? Your leg come out? Anyone else? Your leg came out? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, every one of you, you saw that come out right in front of your eyes it just happened what happened authority jesus power to heal the sick is here today you don't have to beg you don't have to cry you just have to receive you just have to receive your healing in jesus name amen hallelujah isaiah 53 5 it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our, weak, our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoings. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Say, by his stripes, I am healed. Again, by his stripes, I am healed. Okay, I want you to understand this. When it comes to healing you walking in divine healing, you being whole, your body being strong, pain not existing in your body, but you walk in the strength. Healing is not a condition. Healing is an identity. My name is Kevin Ortiz. Kevin Ortiz. You see me tomorrow, you'll call me Kevin. Some of you will call me Pastor Kevin. Some of you will address me in those names. That's my identity. My name is Kevin. Your name is healed.
Do you get it? Tomorrow, your name is still healed. Next week, your name is still healed. You might be 95 years old. Your name is still healed. That is who you are through the stripes of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. That's who I am. I am healed. If we are, that means I am. Tell your neighbor, I am healed. Amen. See, you got to understand, you don't have to pay again the, the price for your healing. Jesus paid the price completely. Even if your body doesn't know it, you are healed. Even if your body is experiencing pain, it does not change what Jesus has done for you. You are healed. You need to speak to your body that you are not sick, but you are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, he paid the price. If we went to, to go eat at the restaurant and, and, and we ate a beautiful meal, and at the end of ordering whatever we wanted and eating the beautiful meal, they will come with a check and we have to pay the price for the bill. But if, if it came to the time where we were getting ready to leave and the waiter comes up to us and say, excuse me, Pastor Kevin, somebody has already paid for everybody at the table their meal. I would not walk to the to the front and say, do I owe anything? What is my bill? I need to pay again. No, I'll walk out of there and I say, thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Thank God I got to eat. I should have ordered more. I should have ordered more. <laughs> Why? Because someone paid the price for me. I got to enjoy it because someone else paid for it. I want to tell you, Jesus already paid for you. Just enjoy. You are healed. You are healed. Don't make excuses for pain and sickness and disease. Preach to your body. How dare you get sick? No, no, you are not the sick. You are the healed in Jesus' name. Begin to command that pain to go. Begin to command that sickness to go in Jesus' name. And begin to expect something to happen. Just expect something to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have to begin to expect that things will change. I remember one time I, you know, I, I, after my father passed away, you know, I, I knew he was in heaven. I, I wasn't sad. I was jealous. Hallelujah. Because he was with Jesus. Amen. And so I never go to the, the, the graveside of my father to, to do anything there because I know he's not there. It, 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 it's, it's a memorial, but, you know, I have a memorial written in my, in my heart of my father's life. But one day I was praying and the, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get up and go to your father's grave. So I went to my father's grave, and I was praying at home, and I went over there. And as I got to my father's grave, I just got on my knees, and I continued my prayer as if I was at home. Nothing changed. I was just from one place to the next. I wasn't praying to my father. I was praying to my heavenly father. I was praying to my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. My father, I'll tell you, my father is very happy in heaven, amen? He's very happy. And so after I prayed, I felt a release from the Holy Ghost, and I got in the car, and I went, I was driving home, and uh, apparently something in the grass bit me. And I started developing a rash on my arm. It just started bubbling up. And I looked at that, and I said, no, 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 no. I don't accept that in the name of Jesus. I am healed. I command this thing to leave right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I put my hand like this, and as I went like this, all the rash began to leave. It began to leave. I did not welcome it. I did not accept it. The Bible says resist the devil, and he will flee. That means he will run in terror. In terror. Some of you need to, need to start resisting. The problem is that we get a little pain, and, and you might be married, and you think, oh, if I got this little pain, maybe my wife will baby me a little bit. And you think, oh, I'm just not feeling too good. Can you go make me a steak? <laughs> Listen, if she didn't make you a steak when you were healthy, she ain't going to make you a steak when you're sick. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm not feeling too good. Can you catch the rat? <laughs> <laughs> 
We have to get out of that mindset. We have to get out of that mindset of accepting pain for any reason. No, it doesn't belong to me. It, I am healed, amen. Tell your neighbor, you are healed. That's your identity. You are healed. You, 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 listen, you'll wake up one day and the devil said, oh, you're getting old, so you got these pains. No, as you get older, you get stronger. That should be your confession. I don't care if you're getting older. Your eyesight should still be strong in Jesus' name. Your mind should still be strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't accept any weakness because of age. Don't accept anything. Even if you got in an accident, you should still be speaking to your body and saying, no, even though I got an accident, my body will be re restored back to wholeness in Jesus' mighty name because I am not the sick. I am healed. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of times we make excuses. We, we make time excuses. Uh, I heard a story about these, these three sisters that lived together, and they were already in their 80s. And two of them were sitting at the table. One of them was walking up the stairs. And uh, the one walking up the stairs stopped halfway, and, and she thought, am I going up or am I going down? <laughs> the other one had an empty glass in front of her at the table. And she looked at the empty glass, and she said, was I getting water or did I just finish drinking water? And the third sister was watching her two other sisters. She says, man, I'm 85 years old. And I still remember everything and I know where I am at. Come in. <laughs> anyway. Go with me to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you are healed. Hallelujah. We have to hurry because we're going to pray for all that are sick, and we're going to pray for those that are watching as well. We're, we're live up to 1 p.m. Thank God for this open door. Amen. Mark chapter 16. Begin in, first, in verse 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when I was, uh, I was in Florida serving in the ministry over there, I was the TV producer, and the Lord had told me to come back home. My wife had already come home to prepare the home, and I was supposed to join her two weeks later. So the day that she left... I woke up in the morning, and I felt this pain in my chest as if I was having, like, a heart attack. I was about 32 years old at the time, around there, muscle menos. And uh, I had never experienced pain in my heart. And the devil was telling me, you're, you're having a heart attack. You're, you're, you're going to die. You're, no one even knows that you live in this apartment, and your wife is going to come back two weeks later and find you dead here. That's what the devil was telling me. I didn't even know where a hospital was. And I didn't have health insurance, so I wasn't just going to show up to any place because I knew it was going to cost me everything. I didn't know what to do. And the devil, you know, the Bible, you know, the devil's really quick to, to, to put fear. You know, you get a little pain, and immediately the devil will say, it's cancer. It's a heart attack. You're not going to make it. The worst of the worst of the worst. You got the Hong Kong flu, and you never even been to Hong Kong. And so that was going on in my mind and going on, and I didn't know what to do. And, and there was a clinic down the road from the church, and I figured, you know what? I'm going to go in there and ask them to give me a checkup. And that, that was my thought, you know, but I knew that I had this pain. So I went in there, and uh, I filled out the paperwork, and they asked, what, what are you here for? And I said, well, I, I just need a checkup. And they, they said, a checkup? Are you in the military? No. Is it for work? No. Then why do you want a checkup? And I said, well, they say you should get a checkup every year. I, I figure I'll get a checkup. And uh, 
they kept on asking questions and asking questions. And finally, I said, you know, I woke up with some pain in my heart. Immediately, the whole conversation changed. They took me into a room, and, and they said, uh, Mr. Ortiz, take off your shirt. And I didn't want to take off my shirt. And they called more people to look at me taking off my shirt. And then they put all these things on me, these sticky things, and, and they attached to the machine and began to make noise and began to write things. And, and every time I heard a noise, I was thinking, oh, that beep was wrong. That beep was bad. That beep, that, 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 that wasn't the same one as the other one. Something must be wrong. Something must be wrong. And my fear is going through the roof. I mean, I'm just like f so full of fear. And, and then after they did the, the, the check and everything, the doctor comes in and says, well, sir, the, the tests show that that nothing's wrong, but that doesn't mean anything. You should go to the hospital anyway. I'm thinking, well, why did I come here in the first place, you know? I went to the church, and on Friday, they prayed for the sick. In James, it talks about if anyone is sick, let them come before the elders of the church, let them anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith will make them whole. And so... The next day was going to be Friday, and, I, and so I, I, I went to church on that Friday, and I filled out a little card, and I, and I put my condition on there. And the elder of the church was there, and he took oil, he put it on his hand, and he put it on my head, and he spoke healing to my body. I felt the glory of God come upon me. I felt just the, the, the electricity of heaven. I was just enraptured with the Holy Ghost. I fell out on the floor. And I just was under the glory of God worshiping the Lord. I must have been down there for about 20 minutes. When I got up off the floor, I still felt the pain in my chest. Nothing changed. I had an encounter with God. I did everything the word of God told me to do, but yet I still felt that condition. I got up and I said, Lord, I did everything your word says to do to be healed. I had the elders of the church pray for me. They anointed me with oil, and I believe by faith that I'm healed. So this condition, I don't accept it in my body. I claim right now that I'm healed in Jesus' name. And I even told God, I said, God, if I end up dying because of this, I want them to write on my tomb that I am healed in Jesus' name. I got so convicted about the healing power of Jesus Christ. I refused to accept my body speaking to me of it being sick. So that day, I stopped complaining. Every day I would wake up, the pain was still there. Nothing changed. But in my heart and in my mind, I'm healed. I didn't complain about it. I didn't tell anybody about it. I, this was my personal walk of faith with God. I came back home. God started speaking to, my, to me about ministering. I started preaching, and then I had this desire not just to preach the gospel, but to see miracles and signs and wonders and people to be healed. This minister came in preaching, and he brought a cross, and he said, whatever you're believing God for, today I want you to touch the cross with faith. And as you touch the cross with faith, just receive your, what you're believing God for. And I'm believing God that I'll be able to be used by God to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I stopped asking about my heart because I no longer listened to it. I was healed in my heart, in my mind, and in my, my very depths of my soul. I was healed. Even though my heart said, you have pain. When I came up to the altar that day and I touched the cross, I felt the pressure that was on my, on my chest and the pain that was on my chest just leave. I began to worship God. I saw the minister and, and I told him my testimony how I had been believing God, how I was believing God to be used in the ministry of healing and how, God, how the Lord removed that pain. He called me up and I told the church about it. And, he, and as I began to tell the church about it, the glory of God came and filled this church. And, and the, man, the man of God said, said, if you need healing, come to the altar. There's a healing virtue in the church right now. And so people came and then he looked at me and said, Kevin, lay hands on them. I went down there and laid hands on them and everyone I laid hands on was instantly healed just like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to understand, healing's already done. And you just have to receive it in the name of Jesus. The two truths is that Jesus has given you the authority 
to walk in divine healing, that's his grace. He paid for it at the cross. He carried, he, the Bible says, uh, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. By grace, we are healed. Amen. But then he gives us the power and the authority to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. The healing power of Jesus Christ to work in the healing uh, of laying hands for the sick and see them recover. It is a call to the lost to tell them that Jesus is alive. You could try to argue with people all you want that Jesus is real and Jesus is alive, but a miracle settles the issue. When someone is, who is sick gets healed, when someone is broken and that power of sickness is, is removed and they're restored by the power of God, a miracle settles the issue. And that, you know, if we're going to preach the gospel, let's preach with power. You could try to convince them all you want to read the Bible from Genesis to Revolution and try to convince them about it, and they'll come up with another book and read it back to you. But when they're sick and you say, let me pray for you, that pain is going to go in the name of Jesus. And you lay hands on them, watch how that pain will go. And they're going to look at you and say, what happened? That's Jesus. He's real and he loves you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. If you're sick in body, if you have any pain, today's your day. You shouldn't have to suffer from it in the name of Jesus. Amen. But before I pray, I want to share one last thing. Uh, I, I know we only have a few more minutes, but I want to share one last thing with you before we pray for the sick. There we, and I have to give you this warning, and I have to say it as much as possible, because we are, we are so blessed that we curse ourselves. We are so blessed that we curse ourselves. If you ever travel outside of the country, you will not see the abundance of prosperity and blessing like we have here in the United States. I, take, I, I could drive less than one minute and I could be in many restaurants. And they will feed you and they will, they'll put food in front of you and it's so cheap and, and, it, and it all tastes wonderful. It all looks good on the picture. Amen. And we want to put everything in our mouth and we can't. But we try, and, but what's happening is we are cursing ourselves with the lifestyle. Thank God for his blessings, but learn to control what you eat. Food is for the body. The body is not for food. If you're eating for pleasure and enjoyment, listen, I understand gathering around family once in a while, enjoy yourself. But other than that, you should control what you put in your mouth. Listen, high blood pressure, diabetes, it is a, a problem in society. It's not a curse of the devil. It is an abuse of, of our bodies. And so if you want to take authority over, the, over that, God will bring restoration and healing to you, but it starts with faith. You have to control what you put on that plate. Eat the right things. If you don't know what the right things is, Talk to Professor Google. He will teach you everything you need to know regarding what to eat. But eat the right things. If you eat junk, there's a reason why they call it junk food. If you eat junk, listen, most of the food is oil-based. It's plastics. Most of the food is not real. And we are feeding ourselves with that. And then we feel like, like garbage. We, can't, we have no energy. We have no time to spend with our family. No time to work, uh, to do a good job at work. No time to, to even enjoy being alone at home with our family. Listen, if your body is acting weird, Start at the dinner table. Start at the breakfast. Start at the lunch plate. Find out what you're eating because whatever you're putting in is causing those things. But, you know, the amazing thing is science is catching up to Jesus. They're really not catching up to Jesus. They're just realizing the revelation that Jesus, that the word of God has already given. Do you know that, that they started fasting and people with mental illnesses, the, when they started fasting, those mental illnesses left? People who had diabetes, they started fasting, and then those, those, the diabetes left. High blood pressure, blood pressure started coming down when they started fasting. And I'm talking about scientific. You could go on, on YouTube and put science of fasting, and they'll show you the whole thing. And, and it's almost like a reset bus button. What, what does the, the Word of God speak to us about prayer and fasting? That's a lifestyle we could, we, we're supposed to do. Why? Because we're supposed to hit a reset button every now and then to put us back in order. 
Because whatever we put in our stomach is creating those things that are destroying our bodies. Amen. And so listen, God is a healer. He is a restorer. But, you know, if I hit my hand with a hammer and, and I hit my thumb and I bust up my thumb and I go to God and I say, God, heal me and he heals me. And then tomorrow I take the same hammer and say, God will do it again. It doesn't work that way. If, if we're cursed because we choose that. Then, then the problem is not on God and the problem is not the devil. Listen, sometimes the, the devil is the one in the mirror. Yeah. Pastor, just kill back to healing. Stop talking about this food stuff. I like my, my tacos. I like my mateca. I like my tamales. I like, listen, all that is good, but there's not a coincidence why we have the highest cases of diabetes in the entire country. It's a curse, but it's not a curse from the devil. It's a curse that we have inflicted ourselves. We have to change our eating habits. And then we're cursing our children by feeding them the things that they should not be eating. Amen? And now I'm not saying try to be healthy tomorrow. You're eating bark. That's what you're going to eat, bark tomorrow. <laughs> Cut that branch. We're going to cook it up. No. Little by little, educate yourself, amen, and you'll see that health will come quickly. You'll have a lot of energy. You'll be, you'll, you'll be happy, good-looking, and fun to be with, amen. Tell your neighbor you're, you're good-looking and fun to be with, amen, all because you choose to control what you put on. Joey, stand up. This is Joey Camacho. Joey, when I was growing up in Seminole High School, he was the number one athlete in my, in, in, in my grade. Joey got in a terrible accident when you were like a freshman, right? And how many surgeries did you have? So many. It destroyed everything. It destroyed all, I mean, your, your, your mind was damaged. Your body was damaged. You name it, it was damaged. And Joey, Joey's a miracle. He shouldn't be alive. But people prayed for him. And now Joey, when he started coming back to church, the Lord just kept on ministering to him, ministering and ministering to him. And he couldn't do certain things. He couldn't work. He couldn't run. He couldn't do those things. But he started grabbing hold of the word and using his faith, and he started adapting to a, a, a healthy lifestyle. Now he's, an, he's running every 5K you can imagine. You know, the problem with Joey right now, let me tell you a problem. He enjoys a healthy lifestyle so much that he keeps inviting me to run those things with him. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. God bless you, brother. Praise God. And that's because the Lord has put, his, put, put a mark upon him that he's going to use them for the glory of God. But listen, you can't serve God if your body's being broken down. And you can't blame the devil if you're the one cursing your body. Amen. If, you're gonna, if you eat donuts every day, you're going to be a donut, amen? If, if tamales is all you eat, listen, that stuff is going to take you to another place that you don't want to go. It's good in moderation, but make sure you eat for health and strength, amen? You will thank God for it, amen? Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? Say amen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen.